Months after the tragic events of October 7th, members of the Israeli parliament met with dozens of family members who lost their loved ones to express their heartfelt gratitude and solidarity. Veronica Nefach reports from the Israeli parliament. Today was a unique event in that members of Knesset gave honor, respect, and thanks to many, many women who were widowed uh, in the most recent, I'd say, last six months, seven months since the war and until today. Um, all of the widows who were, were invited, of which there are how many widows that have been created since the war started? About 300. And uh, they've all got children, of course, and so it's, um, it's, it's a huge number for the state of Israel. No stranger to grief, member of Knesset Limor Son Harmelech spoke to the media line about her personal story. This morning, I got the news that the terrorist cell commander who murdered my husband, Shuli, was eliminated in Rafah. And you need to understand, this terrorist murdered a mother of eight children, apart from the fact that he killed my husband. He killed another two men, he killed two soldiers, he severely injured many civilians, he did a series of murderous attacks, and when they caught him, he said in court, each one of us has a son, and he will kidnap a soldier until the last of our fighters, our activists, is released from jail. And he said, the years in prison that you've sentenced me to are meaningless. I'll be released. And he was right. In a stupid, evil deal, he and more than 1,000 other terrorists were released. He was released to Gaza, and from there he commanded the cell that murdered the boy Malachi Rosenfeld, a young man. And today, 20 years later, after that attack, we meet the same terrorist in Rafah, commanding one of the cells of the Hamas brigades. And to be given this news on the morning of this gathering, in my eyes, it is a victory for Israel, a victory over our enemies. The price is heavy and precious, but it teaches us how great is the sacrifice. Thank you to those who paid the price for all of us. Thank you to those who carry this burden, its pain, but also its strength, its perseverance, and its faith. In a moment of profound courage, the widows bravely shared their stories of love, loss, and resilience, providing comfort and solidarity to others facing similar grief. I'm a widow of uh, Ari Rhein. Uh, he was uh, my husband uh, for 10 years, 10 wonderful years. We have three kids. Uh, three girls, Shaked is nine, and uh, our twins, uh, Geffen and Carmel, they are six years old. Um, and uh, five months ago, uh, Aria was in a very important, uh, very important mission uh, to find out uh, some, they had an information on kidnaps, uh, uh, women who were kidnapped uh, and uh, hostages in Gaza. Uh, and during this mission, he was a commander in the, in the tank, and um, Hamas uh, shot two uh, RPG, uh, and um, he was immediately killed inside the tank. I'm Talia Heber. Hamas killed my husband, Zachariah Pesach Heber, in January. In January. It's been very interesting hearing from the Chabay Knesset, hearing what their initiatives are, and meeting with other families that are in a similar situation. I have three little children, and hearing from other moms what it's like to go through it is very hard. I think it's, it's one of many events that supposed to, to let us feel hugged. Um, and it's always very nice first to meet other friends that I met in the last couple of months, uh, that we can understand each other without even talk. And, and also to be one to be hugged by, by one family, the organization. Creating an atmosphere of essential support for widows and orphans who lost their loved ones on 7th of October and during the war, one family organization launches a special event to gather all of them together, including a presentation of a book, Puppy Love, that helps children drip with grief and sorrow. I can feel the importance of it, like in my house, our kids are allowed to cry and shout and laugh and have fun and miss their father and miss the like opportunity to be family, regular family. Um, and they also see me uh, when I cry or when I'm happy. Um, and I think it's very good 
and important to talk about it and to read about it. I already have uh, books about it that we read together and we talk about it together. Uh, we also write some stuff, me and the girls together, and I'm definitely going to, to read this book and probably use it. The event underscored the importance of support and understanding as Israeli society strives to aid those in need. I would say that people who have expertise um, to reach out to one family and say that they want to help because then we can sort of connect them with widows and bereaved parents and children, social workers, uh, doctors, lawyers, uh, accountants, uh, massage therapists, anybody who has like a, an expertise, anything that could help them. And if everybody would take upon themselves to help one family, we can, we can do a tremendous amount of good. Attending members of parliament and politicians took the opportunity to share with the media line their views on the ongoing war, providing insights into the current situation. My hope is that we will win the war. We must fight. We must not stop. There are all kinds of voices in the world that maybe want us to lose, maybe want us to stop the war. We must not stop. This is our home, these are our children. There was once a wise Prime Minister, David Ben-Gurion, who said a very wise thing. He said, it doesn't matter what the Gentiles say, it matters what the people of Israel do. I appreciate the countries of the world. They need to know that we are fighting for everyone. We are fighting against Jihad, against Hamas, against the people who today want to bring harm to us and tomorrow to every democratic country. But we will continue our war, and with the help of God, we will win. We didn't choose this war, but there is an enemy here who forced a war on us. And if we don't fight this enemy, and we don't destroy it, then in the end, we won't be here. It's a war over our existence. The world needs to understand this. And if the world chooses not to understand this for its own reasons, then we need to take care of our interests as a nation, as the state of Israel, and as the Jewish people. Veronica Neifach reporting from the Israeli parliament from Jerusalem for the media line.